Hello everybody, this is Tony Callis. So I just covered fuel trim and I covered how we diagnose, most of the time, how we diagnose problems with cars, with Porsches. But I wanted to now talk about some of those uh, intermediate steps and why we do what we do with the items. So if we have an idle problem, and, and which means we're leaning towards a vacuum leak, I want you to smoke test the intake system when it's at ambient, meaning cold. Uh, not necessarily cold outside, but just the car hasn't been started for the day. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just run a very simple manometer test. And what is a manometer? It's just a very, very fine vacuum gauge. So what I like to do when I'm looking for a vacuum leak in a Porsche is, is the first thing I like to do is, is, is run a manometer test because it's the easiest thing you can do. You can spend a, a, a few hundred dollars, buy yourself a, a very nice fine vacuum gauge known as a manometer, and you can't go and just buy a standard vacuum gauge. A standard vacuum gauge measures in inches of mercury or HG. I need you to measure in inches of water. Now, let me, let me put this into layman's terms so you understand. Let's, take, let's say you have a, 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 just a clear, vac, uh, clear tube that you go and buy in your hardware store, and you can do this. You can actually do this, but I don't recommend it because you can suck water into the engine, and that's not good for the engine oil, and it throws off uh, speed diagnostics when they're trying to check your engine oil and run an oil analysis. <laughs> so let's say you buy yourself a clear uh, tube at the hardware store, and you, you take yourself a ruler, and you mark zero, and one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, and you do the same on the other side, and you fill that with a vacuum to the zero point, so it levels at the zero. And then you lightly suck on one end, and it will pull that liquid up, and wherever it is on one side, it will match it on the other. So let's say it's at two inches on this side, it will be at two inches on this side, meaning it's a total of four inches of water, not inches of mercury. Plus, you don't want to ever use a neurotoxin like mercury. Don't ever try that. But what I'm trying to get across is you never, you don't want to use a vacuum gauge. You want to get yourself uh, a manometer. Now you can get a slack tube tester with the water, but save yourself the hassle, buy a manometer, um, CR tools uh, through Ellen Engineering is the way to go. And what you'll do is you'll turn it on, zero the, the meter, and put it at inches of water. You're gonna take off your oil cap and connect this adapter to the engine. Then you wanna start the engine and look and see what the value is. I was the first one to adapt the manometer to the Porsches. I'm not brilliant, I just looked at what BMW was doing. I had a car that was running lean, a Porsche that was running lean. So I took a manometer and I actually adapted it to the Porsches. Then I started noting the empirical data down. And over about uh, 10 cars, I noticed what was normal and what was not normal. A car that ran normal and one that didn't and what those values were. So we came up with a value of about four to six inches negative of vacuum for the engine. So when we run this manometer test, over the 15 years of teaching professional instructor uh, to, um, it's an advanced level diagnostic, I, I ask this question. I say, well, if you're looking for if, let's say a very high vacuum reading of uh, tw negative 20 inches of water means that the engine is running lean. It will create an internal vacuum leak. What would a low value mean? Like, um, let's say we're looking for a negative four to negative six inches of water and we have a zero or we have a one. Well, aside from the mechanical part of the engine, what that means is the engine's gonna run lean also. So everybody says, Oh, well, that means it's going to run rich. If one value is on this side of the spectrum means it's running lean, this means it's going to run rich. Incorrect. It's going to run lean on this side and it's going to run lean on this side because if you have a high vacuum reading in the engine, that as far as the crankcase, that's going to create a, an internal vacuum leak driving the fuel system to go richer, meaning you're running lean. If you have a low number with the manometer, it's also going to run lean because it's a false air leak. It's a very confusing situation. I can explain it further in advanced level video, but uh, for now, I want you to understand the manometer and how you can find uh, vacuum leaks with it and, and or at least determine that there's a vacuum leak. But this is critical in, in running diagnostic of fuel trim. So one of the most basic tools that you can utilize with engine diagnostic or fuel trim diagnostic is a, is a smoke tester. So what I like to do, and it runs on baby oil, it has a little heating element, and um, 
you can utilize to, to look for vacuum leaks. So when I'm looking for vacuum leaks, the first thing I'll do is I'll run a smoke test. Now I don't start the engine uh, or I let it cool down overnight. I want to make sure the engine's at ambient, meaning the, the outside temperature is the same as the engine. Uh, the, the, the equalizer is no delta. So what I'll do is I'll pull a vacuum hose off and I'll get my smoke tester ready and I'll pump smoke into the system, into the intake system. And usually again, you want to do this while the engine's cold and you can see if there's a vacuum, if there's a vacuum leak because smoke is coming out of, of a, a leak or crack or some sort of blown seal. Um, when you're utilizing this tester for an, for an evaporative system fault, then you want to use the flow, flow gauge, but not when you're looking for a vacuum leak for the most part. So this can be utilized for a number of different things, uh, evaporative emissions, I would always use my flow tester to see if there's any flow from the fuel tank. Because you'll get check engine lights on, you'll get a check engine light on because uh, your fuel cap is faulty. Well, there are many other places in that evaporative, evaporative emission system that can leak, and uh, the purge valve is one of them. Um, I was explaining in another video where, let's say you go to get fuel, and you go get into your car, uh, your Porsche, and it doesn't start, it just cranks. Gawk, 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 gawk. Gawk, 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 gawk. What's happened is usually, usually, this isn't always the case, the purge valve, which is also known as the tank vent valve, is stuck open. You go to put fuel into the tank. The air in the tank has to come out because fuel is going in. That air coming out is very heavily uh, fuel laden. It will go uh, all the way back to the engine and fill the intake system because that uh, tank vent valve is stuck open and it, won't, it will flood the engine. And if you wait just a little while, it will start. So um, that's one of the leaks that you'll see in an evaporative emissions system um, if there's a check engine light on or, or sometimes it doesn't pick up on it. Not every fault has, not every sy uh, symptom has a fault with it. Thank you.